Almost every single time that I'm on the river with a group of tourists going out to see the river with Riverkeeper, and I bring up the subject of combined sewers and I point out the outfalls to them as we drive and by on the river, there's always people on board that say, that still goes on? I thought that was fixed years ago. How come that's happening here? I thought there was a Clean Water Act. And I have to answer that, yeah, except that New Jersey's dropped the ball completely on fixing this problem. And uh, that gets people riled up. The number that the EPA has put on it is 23 billion gallons of combined sewage that enter New Jersey waterways every year. 23 billion gallons. It's almost incomprehensible, that amount of sewage. And yet, here we are with a state agency that allows this to continue, even though it's been against the law, basically, since 1972. Right now, you go up and down the rivers in northern New Jersey, and there are vast stretches of riverbank that are totally wasteland. So what comes pouring out of there now is contaminated water. In the older cities we have in Newark, Jersey City, Bayonne, they have what are known as combined sewer systems. What that means is that there's one set of pipes that are under the ground that carry both the sewage, the human waste, and partially treated industrial waste. And at the same time, the same pipes collect stormwater that runs off the landscapes when there's rain or some precipitation event. And when it rains, the system is overwhelmed. And so it discharges directly into our waterways without any treatment at all. And that leads to a high level of contamination in the water. The way that they relieve the pressure within the pipes when there's a heavy rainfall is by allowing doors inside the pipes to open up and redirect the flow from the sewage treatment plant to the river. If you were on a boat and you weren't aware that there were combined sewer overflows on that river and you were out there during the rainfall, the first thing you would notice would be the smell. Then you see a milky, and I don't mean milky white, I mean milky like chocolate milk, coming out of the pipe in a cloud that would then spread out into the river. And you could literally, if you were standing above the pipe and looking down, you could actually watch the pollution come out and be dispersed into the water column. New Jersey has about 210, give or take, points along our shoreline, most of them in the northern part of the state here, that actually discharge this material directly into the rivers and into the bays whenever there's a big rainstorm. Inside that square opening, there's a round pipe, and it's got a door on it that's attached to the cable that's on top there. So when there's a storm and they have to discharge the sewage, that door opens up. One of the things that happens in New Jersey now is that when there's raw sewage in the water, when there's been a release, nobody knows about it. And there's no notification uh, to the general public in a timely fashion that there's raw sewage in the water and you should not go in there. And that little yellow orange sign that's there on, on the uh, street sign, that's the only notice that anybody has that there's a CSO there. The lower Hackensack River, the area that's between Bergen County and Hudson County before it goes into North Bay, currently has 29 distinct combined sewer overflow outfalls. Towns of Hackensack, Ridgefield Park, North Bergen, Jersey City. Every time there's a rainfall in this area, in this region on the Hackensack River, those towns are dumping raw sewage into the river. The uh, Passaic River, the entire city of Patterson, was declared to be the first industrial metropolitan area in the world because of the power of the water. And when they built up the city, they built the sewers to discharge directly into that water. It's a tremendous waste of potential for New Jersey. I mean, people think of the Passaic as it goes through Newark and Harrison. If they think of it at all, they think of it as a polluted blight on the neighborhood. But if that were clean, imagine the waterfront capabilities, the possibilities that would be there. On this side, on the west side of North Bay over here, this is the industrial waterfront of the city of Newark here. You've got Sake Valley Sewage Commissioners, the tank farm. There's a CSO up there, up that channel, right next to the dock. Newark Bay is really sad. The saddest thing about North Bay is the fact that it's a relatively closed area. There's 
water inputs coming down from the Passaic River and the Hackensack River, which means all of the bacteria that gets into those rivers runs right into Newark Bay. And then you have the city of Bayonne and parts of Jersey City on the east side of the bay. And Newark and Elizabeth on the other side of the bay, those are all towns that have combined sewer systems. In our area, there's just been a long-term perception that these waters are dirty. And so people never thought they should go down to the river and uh, cast a line or go fishing or swimming. And so that perception has just maintained itself. It flies in the face of everything that we stand for as a river keeper. Uh, we want these rivers to be clean, we want them to be healthy, and we want them to be available to the population for recreation purposes and for other legitimate purposes. As a public health issue, CSOs are incredibly bad. As an economic issue, they're horrible for the economy. There's nothing about CSOs that have any redeeming economic or social value. These rivers are being used as sewers. It has become this way because New Jersey has never begun to address it. They've always come up with a need to study more things before they start doing things. The things that can be done are not really that complicated. You gotta start. We need to activate the public. People have to start the drumbeat at the local level with their mayor and their council and their town administrator and their local sewage agency. All of those people that are concerned about this issue need to start there. You know, these people represent us, they work for us. This river belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to the DEP, it doesn't belong to the Army, it belongs to the people.